So I picked up this at a local tool sale. It's an automatic hacksaw. Um, kind of neat little thing. Seems like it was locally made. Um, it's got a nice little clamp right here. And things currently not working. Looks like it had an oil leak that seized up right through there. Um, so I'm guessing either the motor seized or the gearbox seized or the wiring's bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart. I picked it up cheap. It was 50 bucks, which honestly for an antique tool, it, even if it doesn't work, it's still a neat little piece of machinery from a while ago. I haven't actually looked up to see how old it is, but yeah, see right there's what I paid for it. But it's pretty neat. So hopefully I should be able to get it working. It's an old Westinghouse motor. So I'm going to take this apart and I'll show you guys what's going on. Alright, so just pop the back plate cover off right here. There's just a little metal plate covering it. And instantly, first problem I notice is right here. The insulation off the black wire had completely got shredded where it comes through over here. So that would have been creating a short, stopping everything from working. So I'm going to replace this wiring. Should be able to dig something up. Um, whilst I'm at it, I'm going to take my multimeter, test this to this for continuity. Because around here, there is an on-off switch. And what I can, from what I can tell is you put it like that, and then as the hacksaw comes down and finishes its cut, it hits that and turns off the machine. Which is an ingenious bit, but obviously I need to check, make sure that the switch is working. The easiest way to do that is just a continuity check. Um, this is a little bit loose. Um, it's fine for the off motion, but sometimes you can see right there, it slips over the switch and gets jammed when you try to turn it on. So I want to see if I can do anything about that. It doesn't look like this comes off, but there could be a bolt somewhere else. Um, so I'm going to test that, and I'll be right there. So basic multimeter here. Um, unfortunately, it looks like my battery is dying, so I'm going to have to find a new one of them. But you put it onto continuity mode on this, you have to hit select to get it into it to basically do the diode or continuity. The continuity is a buzzer. It's also diode mode, so. When you touch the pins together, if you can hear, you get a beep. If there's no circuit, you get no beep. Really easy for testing switches. But, of course, this has been off for a while, so as you can see, the battery is marked as low. I'm going to see if I've got a new battery and get that done. I'll be right back. Okay, battery's replaced and I put it into continuity mode, so now, much stronger signal when you put it on that. Um, unfortunately, I just have my phone today. I don't have my regular camera. I didn't grab it. I mean, admittedly, it's inside. I could go get it, but then the resolution would change halfway through the video. So I'm going to try to prop it up, but I don't know if it's going to work. Let's see what I can do. All right, so obviously I couldn't prop it up, and it didn't work, and then I hit random buttons, and the video ended. But anyway, just tested the switch. That should be on right now, and there is no signal coming through. So I'm going to pop this plate off, sorry for the shaking video, I'm looking at the switch, not the camera. I'm going to pop this plate off, and that looks like the mounting for the screw on the back. This is the plate. So I pop this unit off, here's where the wire comes in. Then get that all tested, see where the break in the connection is, if it's a bad wire that I need to replace. Because um, there is no continuity between here and here when the switch is turned on. So somewhere along this line, there's a break. So, I'm going to get that done. And I'll show you guys what I find. Okay, so I got this all taken apart. That's where the switch sits. Wires come in. Um, the switch is dead. I haven't checked the wires yet, but continuity across here, regardless of position. And it doesn't have a very resounding click, so I'm guessing the switch burns out at some point. Given the age of this, not too bad. But this is pretty much just a standard light switch. I'm going to go digging through what I have laying around. So I'm going to see if I don't have to run out. So I don't have to run out and get one, and I need to remember to grab my actual camera so I don't drop it like I do my phone. Um, but yeah, I'm going to continuity test these wires quick. And then, as long as those are good, I can still use this, replace the switch, and then this thing should fire up, depending on what the state of the motor is. I cannot get this to spin by hand, but it's probably a worm gear in the gearbox here. I want to open this up because of all of this leaking oil. But I'm going to get those couple of things done, and... Should have it up and running soon. So, <clears throat> I have this switch in the storage. It's just a standard wall switch. Um, 
and they do do the same to this. Okay, basically I just need to cut these off on the top and leave those holes right there and then it will mount right in and work fine. Um, if only I had a hacksaw to cut those off. <clears throat> That's a bit of irony for you. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get these cut off. I'm either going to cut them off by hand or just see if I can bend it enough to fatigue it into snapping right through here so it'll fit on that plate. But luckily I had a switch in stock so I didn't have to go out to the store. Okay, so I'm halfway through rewiring the other side but I decided to pop off the gearbox um, and found out the reason why it's completely seized. It is completely dried out. Um, the smell is actually quite hideous. It is rancid. Whatever, I'm guessing this is old oil, but it is hideous. So I'm going to let that gloop its way out for a bit. What's left of the liquid, most of it is actually set solid. Um, and then I guess I'm going to begin some paraffin or some, some form of cleaner. Whew, that smell. I'm actually going to step back away from that because every so often I get a whiff and wow. So that's going to be the main problem here. So we're going to have to do that. So what I might as well do whilst I'm doing that is clean down the entire thing. So I'm going to spend some time scraping out all the old oil out of that gearbox and putting it into containers. And then I'll take some gasoline or some kind of solvent. I'll figure out what's going to be best for it and uh, get it all cleaned out of there and then put the seal back on. Um, there's the back of the plate that came off and even that's covered so that'll need washing. Uh, of course my landlord just took a parts washer that was back in the mess of the garage. Um, I almost got all of his stuff moved out so I can make this into a workshop. But yep, I'm going to get that done. Try not to throw up too many times because Wow. But yeah, <clears throat> that was an unexpected surprise. I hoped it had just all oozed out of there and hadn't set and gone hideous. Um, I don't know why it's gone that thick. It's probably never had its oil changed in its life. But looks like the gears are in good shape. So hopefully once I get it all cleaned out of there and free up the bearing on the drive shaft here, it's got a shock absorber. So see if ever anything's seized. Hopefully it isn't. And we should have it up and running. All right, so here we are a few months later, um, so much later that I now have the wall done in the workshop and a lot of other things, and all of the landlord stuff is out of here. Also done some wiring things, but I also in the process got this up and running. Um, as you saw earlier in the video, the switch had failed. I got that, <coughs> excuse me, I got that replaced. So now that you put it there and then when it finishes, which I'll show you in a second, it can turn it off. Um, this lever adjusts the amount of pressure the blade puts down on the cut. And then the, this locks the blade from moving back and forth on the slide arm here. Um, so, as you can see it now, moves nice and freely up and down. Um, got this mostly cleaned out. It's still pretty hideous in there, but I refilled it with some oil, scraped off a lot of the old oil. I've still got to clean some more. Um, but now the motor spins freely. And as you can see, pulls that down and begins the cuts. So what I can do here is, I think I've got enough length in the bolt that's in there. If I loosen that up, I need to tighten that down. Before I do, let me lift this up. Well, I can show it working for you. But yeah, that oil was nasty. It took a couple of months to actually get it to ooze out of there and clean it up. And then I'm, I'm just going to put some motor oil in. Right now I haven't really been running it for any good length of time. Oh, I also got a new phone in the meantime. So if the video changes, I apologize. I'm still learning the settings on this one. Um, but yeah, let's see, a little bit of pressure from this, let's see if I have enough sticking out, get it plugged in, and it's going to get loud for a second guys, but I can show you it working, so yep, you just click that on. <laughs> As 
you can see it makes pretty quick work of the bolt. It's gonna get a little loud. And there you go, drops down, turns it off, and as you can see, made a nice straight cut right through. So that's all done, and I figured you'd like to see it up and running. I will... Actually, I don't know what I will do. But basically, this video is finished for now. Um, as you can see, everything's up and running, and you'll probably see me using this for other projects in the future. So, have a good day.